Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, let's let's work our way through the the uh, 2020 paper two um, that that was released in in November. So, question one of that uh, paper two. A restaurant is offering a three course meal consisting of one starter, one main course and one dessert. There are four different starters, six different main courses and eight different desserts to choose from. How many different three course meal combinations are available? OK, so this is what's called the fundamental principle of counting. OK. And you could be asked for a definition of this, okay? So the fundamental principle of counting tells me that if I have M choices for one event and N choices, and you can pick any letters there at all, they could be X and Y, it doesn't matter, N choices for the second event, then total choices is m multiplied by n okay so that is the fundamental principle of counting okay why does that matter here well you have four choices for the first event six choices for the next event and um, eight choices for the last event okay so therefore your total number of meal combinations is four by six by eight OK, put them into your calculator and you'll see you have a 192 combinations. OK, part two. When Jack visits the restaurant, he discovers that the restaurant still has the four starters, OK, and the six main courses available, but it, but it is sold out of some of the desserts. Jack now has 120 different three course meals combinations to choose from. How many different desserts are still available to Jack? OK, so we still have the four starters. We still have the six mains. We still have um, D desserts. OK, and that's 120 different combinations. So six fours, so 24 D is equal to 120. Let's solve for the number of desserts. D is equal to 120 divided by 24, is it five? Is equal to five desserts. Okay, so the fundamental principle of counting. You can get asked questions in this format where you use it, or you can actually get asked to define the fundamental principle of counting, where you have to give um, a, a definition similar to that one there that I have in purple. B, in a large population, one in eight of the people play tennis. Four people are chosen at random from the population. What is the probability that the fourth person chosen is the only one to play tennis? OK, so how I got my head around these um, back in the day was if four people were chosen, then I need four probabilities. One, two, three, four. OK, so this is the first person. The second person. The third person. The fourth person. OK. Now, they're telling us, what is the probability that the fourth person is the only one to play tennis? So what is the probability of somebody playing tennis? Well, one in eight. OK, now, here comes some of the theory behind um, probability. OK, um, all probability adds up to zero. Sorry, adds up to one. So in other words, a person either plays tennis or doesn't play tennis, okay? And that covers all options for the tennis. 
which means if the probability that someone plays tennis is one over eight, then can you see the probability that they don't play tennis is seven over eight, okay? Because seven eighths and one eight add up to eight eighths, which is one, okay? Um, so that's the first thing, okay? The other thing that's important here is in the four people that you're choosing from random, you picked the first person and you picked the second person and you picked the third person and you picked the fourth person. In, in some probability questions, this word would be or, okay? There's an and rule of probability and an or. When it's the and rule, you end up multiplying. When it's the or rule, you end up adding probabilities. Okay, so that's the two pieces of theory I wanted to do in this question. Let's go back to the question. Four people are chosen at random. There's my four people. What is the probability that the fourth person chosen is the only one to play tennis? Well, then, does this person play tennis if the fourth person chosen is the only one? No, they don't. So, therefore, the, that probability is seven eighths. Does the second person play tennis? No. So, that's seven eighths. Does the third person play tennis? Seven eighths. Does the fourth person play tennis? Well, yes, that's what the question asked. So put that into your calculator. So seven eighths multiply by seven eighths multiply by seven eighths multiply by one eighth. Okay. And the probability is three four three over four oh nine six. Okay. And that's as a fraction. And, and it's perfectly fine and normal to leave it as a fraction. You can do it as a decimal if you want. You can do it as a percentage if you want, but, but it, a fraction is perfectly fine. Okay, three people are chosen at random from the population. What is the probability that exactly two of them play tennis? So three people are chosen, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, there's person one, person two, person three. Now we want exactly two of them to play tennis. So are we okay that they play tennis, they play tennis and they don't play tennis, okay? X, don't play tennis. T, play tennis. Okay, is there any other combination I could have here? Yes. Couldn't I have? There's my three people again. The first one could play tennis. The second one doesn't. The third one does. Or could I have a scenario where the first one doesn't play tennis, the second one does, and the third one does. I think that's all the three combinations. I think there's only three. Okay. So... Remember the word and in the middle, the first person and the second person and the third person. OK, so let's work out the probabilities. So the probability that first person played tennis is an eighth. The second person played tennis, an eighth. The third person doesn't play tennis, seven eighths. Let's put him into the calculator. So one over eight multiplied by one over eight multiplied by seven over eight. And I got seven over five one two. Okay, I'm just going to put move this. OK, so I found the probability that the first person played tennis and the second person played tennis and the third person didn't. It's three people. That's why I have three probabilities. Or I have the first person playing tennis, the second person not playing tennis, the third person playing tennis. Put that into your calculator. Or I have the first person not playing tennis, the second person playing tennis, the third person playing tennis. Okay. Now, remember I said there was two rules. There was another word called or. When it's or, we add the probabilities. So I need to add these three numbers together. Okay. 
And when I do that, I get 21 over 512. So that is the probability that if you choose three people, exactly two of them will play tennis. OK, why do I have to do all of the or options? Because in this question, they didn't tell me which of the which two out of the three people play tennis. So that's why I had to look at all the different scenarios where two people play tennis. The difference up here, why didn't I have to do that up here? Because they gave me an order. They said it was the fourth person was the only one who played tennis. So there was only one order then, not tennis, not tennis, not tennis, tennis. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year program that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies, and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.